Learners in Learning Land, Tyler from 10thumbspro.com, and today we're paying tribute to a Chicago blues legend, Elmore James, by doing his favorite tuning, Open A. Now, Open A is really Open E on the guitar, but we're a little further up the fretboard, so on our ukulele, it's Open A. Shuffles, licks, turnarounds, riffs, everything to make it really flashy. Printable tabs by becoming a Patreon, links in the notes, as well as the description. You'll see my email in the description as well if you want some one-on-one -on -one lessons. Printable tabs by becoming a Patreon, links in the notes, as well as the description, where you'll see my email if you want some one-on-one -on -one lessons, as well as links to our other social networks. We're gonna start with an A note. C, well, A, so this goes up a whole step from G to A. The C note goes up a half step to C sharp. Our E note stays the same, and our A note stays the same. Because it's A root, C sharp, major third. The E note is our fifth, and of course, another A note. So this is really cool for the blues. And you could do it for some other things, but we're going to look at it through the lens of the blues today. It just pulls out cool sounds and personalities that you don't get from standard tuning. So let's start with just a basic shuffle. Down, up, ring finger, second fret of the E string, down, up. bakery today but they didn't have my favorite donut oh no 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 now that's the sixth that's the classic shuffle you can also get that flat seven if you want in there too by playing the second and then the third fret down up second fret down up third fret down up Second fret, down, up. I went to the bakery today, but they didn't have bread. Well, I went to the bakery today. I don't know why. I'm just thinking about a bakery. A major chord, bar the fifth fret, D chord, bar the seventh fret, you have an E chord, meaning if we bar this one, sounds great. If we get our ring finger on the seventh fret of the E, we get our shuffle. Wax off, wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off, wax on. Ooh, six, five, six, five, six, seven, six. Same thing as well. You get that pinky up there on the eighth fret. you have the extra little further shuffle as well. The classic shuffle is just zero, two, or five, six, five, six, referring to the intervals. Adding the flat seventh is just a little extra detail, also classic, but not quite as classic as the standard five, six. Also, while we're here, bar the seventh fret, and you get your ring on the, on the ninth fret of the E. Your E shuffle. You want the flat seventh? Just go ahead and get that pinky down or that ring finger down as well. So those are the shuffle. You could clearly do a whole 12 bar blues with that because the 12 bar blues would be four measures of A, two of D, two of A, and then our turnaround would be E, D, A, E, and you can do one of these shuffles over each one of those, no problem. But we can also take this way further than just that. Another idea would be adding some finger picking flair. So here's a cool little shuffle slash finger picking that we can do. We'll pinch the open A string with our thumb, then these two fingers will pull the E and the A string. 
I'm calling this the A string and the C sharp string, um, but we'll also refer to this as the high A and the low A in terms of their position. They're the exact same note if you have a high G. Okay, so we're gonna pluck those three, one, and then your thumb will come down and play the C sharp string on the second beat, two, index finger, and. One, two, and three. Third beat, your thumb up here. One, two, and three. Then your thumb comes down and plays the C sharp string on the four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. After that, to give the shuffle vibe, we're gonna go. And we're gonna pluck the same strings we did on the first beat, A, E, and A, but our middle finger is gonna be down on the second fret. Then our thumb will come down and get the bass here. Then we're gonna get our ring finger on the third fret and repeat the same motion. One, two, three, four. Let's take that a little further and let's give it that sound. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pluck, then we're gonna go thumb on the offbeat index finger. So one, two, and. One, two, and three. two together and you can feel free to mix that finger picking up any way you want you can feel free to use that shuffle any way you want this is just another idea that you can use over the A and the A considering it's those first four measures two in the middle and then one at the end of these 12 bars in the blue nine of them and I'm sorry, seven of them are gonna be A. So it's good to have a lot of options, right? Here's a cool little riff. It's just hammering on third to fourth on the A string, and then your thumb will play the open uh, high A string, formerly known as the G string. Triplet. Three, four, open. Pluck all three. One, two, and three. So we're just using it over the fourth beat in this finger picking example. We'll pluck those three. Thumb index. Thumb on the G string. Then three hammer four. Thumb plays the open G. Now after that, you can see there's another measure here that just has it happening four times. That's just a one bar fill that you can use that sounds pretty good. So you can use that as a one beat fill that you can throw into your finger picking or your strumming. You can use it for a whole measure. It's just a good little tool to have. You might even see it in the turnaround, who knows. All right, lots of cool stuff going on here. Index finger, third fret of the G of the E string. This is a G note, which is our flat seventh. Middle finger on the fourth fret. That's a C sharp, which is our major third, and our thumb on the A string. This is playing an A7 chord without the E note, which is the fifth of the chord. And the fifth of the chord is the most expendable of the notes. So we're strongly implying an A7 chord. If I pluck, if I start with my fingers here on second and three and slide to three and four, I get this really cool sound like this. That sounds great with triplets. One pole, a two pole, a three pole, a four pole. That's that first measure right there, that first idea. Right? 
and you could mix the rhythm up. It doesn't have to be triplets. Slanting it against that A note gives a nice A7 context sound. If you're playing it maybe over the D chord, you could just eliminate that drone string. Okay, the second measure here looks at this in a little more context of maybe what it might sound like in the middle of a measure. Like so we're gonna pluck the same three strings, open, 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 like we're just playing some rhythm. And we're gonna drop down thumb, I'll play the open C sharp here. One, two, and then we're gonna slide into it. Three, po, la, and then again without the slide, four, po, la. All right, so there's another classic, amazing, super fun sounding, tasty fill. It can be a little confusing learning some licks and solos because the scale shapes all change when you move the tuning forks around, tuning pegs. If you move them all equally, it doesn't change. So if you move them all one fret or two frets, it doesn't change. But if you move some and don't move some, then it changes all the shapes. But I'm here to help you with some licks. Let's take a look at this first one. It's a fun one. We're gonna bend up five, just a quarter bend. Then we're gonna come back down five, three, five. And then the open E string. One, two, ball of three. One, two, ball of three. D note, C note, A note. E note. So all notes from our minor pentatonic scale. The C sharp is from the major pentatonic. Then we're going to get up here, 12th fret, A note, and just pluck it and slide on down the fretboard. One, two, pull up, three, four. Just a cool lick. All right, let's take a look at some more. So the first lick, great for the one chord, good for the four, great for the five, and then this one, great for the one, great for the four, not so good for the five. So here we go. We're gonna bend up eighth fret, just a quarter tone, then we're gonna go back to the fifth fret of the E string. One, and. And then we're just right here with this finger down, and we're gonna go triple it, and we're gonna let that one ring for the third and fourth beat. Some vibrato. One and two, pull the three. It helps if you have this finger barring those just right away. Except the vibrato is quite a bit harder. So there is another one. All right, next lick. This one finishes on the E note. And if it finishes on the E note, which would be the fifth interval, it's gonna sound great over the E7. It's gonna sound pretty funky, but pretty good over the D7 and great over the E7. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and mend that and say it's gonna sound great over the D7 as well. It's just the resolution has a little bit of uh, a funkier soul vibe to it. Okay, so for this one, we're gonna come all the way up to the 10th fret which is a G note, our flat seventh. And we're gonna go 10, seven, 10 in a triplet. Landing on the seventh fret on the second beat. Going from the seventh fret down to the fifth fret on the and and then back to the seven on the third beat. So we get 
Love it. Triple a two and three, four. Triple a two and three, four. Sounds pretty, pretty good. All right, next lick. This next one's a cool one too. We got some triplets going and this one's flashy. We're gonna hammer on five to seven and I'm barring the fifth fret of both my E string and my A string. So I'm gonna hammer on five to seven. And then I'm gonna play the fifth fret of the E of the A string continuing through with my thumb. Tripola, tripola, three. Land on the third beat, let that ring for a quarter, and then up to five again on the fourth beat. Okay, we also have, so we also have what I call the linear arpeggio idea. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a Dominant seven arpeggio just across the string. So over the E string, you're gonna play the E, the root note, then you're gonna play the fourth fret, which will be the major third. Root, fourth fret, up to the seventh fret, the fifth interval, and up to the tenth fret, the flat seven. Zero, four, seven, ten. Those are the three notes. It's A, G sharp, B, up to the D note. And those are the three notes that make up an E7. So now we're gonna do it with the D, but because it's a C sharp string, we have to actually have to start on the first. So it'll be one, five, eight, 11. And that is a D7 arpeggio. Those are nice if you're throwing them in with rhythm, thinking about the context, you're strumming over your A. And it goes to the D, you can just. I really like to use those also even more so in the context of a turnaround, okay? All right. So so these bars aren't the only chord shapes you have available. You have the A, and you have your D here, and your E here, but there's also some other cool shapes. For example, you can make a D, index finger, first fret of the C sharp string, ring finger, second fret of the E string. So it's zero, one, two, zero. This is a D chord. And that's actually my preferred shuffle. I'll do that, and then I'll get my pinky on the second fret of the A string, move it over to the third, and then back to the second. D, six, seven, six. D, six, seven, six. This right here, two, three, for two is an E chord. We can do the same thing. Strum through and then get our pinky on the fourth fret of the A string, up to the fifth fret, back to the fourth fret. This one is admittedly harder. But there's still a great couple of tools to have in the tool bag and a great way to approach the rhythm of this song as opposed to only going. In fact, I think the lower register mixes really, really nice. Honestly, I think it sounds better to be totally honest. Ways, all right, turnaround number one. One of the hardest things about this with the open is it's a little harder to 
hold the ukulele from going up and down. I, if I were playing, I would actually have it angled up a little more like this to make it quite a bit more comfortable. So I'll do my best, but the ukulele might want to fall a little bit. Open A string, middle finger, eighth fret, index finger on the seventh fret, eighth fret of the C sharp, index on the seventh fret of the A. So we get one, two, and. Move that shape down a fret, so now it's seven and six. Move it down a fret, and now it's six and five. Then we're gonna do our triplet lick that we've seen. And that's right there where I need to actually, I'm holding it with the bottom of my fingers here, and I can't get there to strum with my index, so I'm actually gonna use my thumb. It's a long explanation if you're wondering why I'm using my thumb there, it's because I'm actually holding the ukulele up with this other hand. And that's just because of the way I'm sitting, so you can see the fretboard. One, two, and three, and four, and one pole up, two, and three, four. I go down on the fifth fret, up on the sixth, and then down on the seventh. And that's D, D sharp, E. One, two, and three, and four, and boom, into the top. When you play this E7, you're hitting that on the third beat, so you let it ring for three and four. One, two, and three, and four, and one pola, two, and three, four, in the top. All right, so that was turnaround number one. Let's take a look at turnaround number two. Similar in a lot of ways, just a couple little differences. Seven will be the same. Eight will be the same, but you're also going to get your ring finger on the ninth fret of the E string. And you're going to do triplets. You're going to go one, two, pola, do, 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 thumb, index, middle. Roll right through them, move it down a fret, through them, move it down a fret, through them, went through all three of them. Three hammer four, open A. And you come up here and you go down on the eight and up on the seven. So it's a little syncopation. This eighth fret is actually the F chord. Doo -doo. And approaching your five chord, the E, from a half step above is also a really cool classic blues sound. Triplets too, right? A little slower. One, two, pola, three, pola, four, pola, one, pola, two, and three, four, into the top. So everything we've done up to this point now is techniques. They're techniques that you can use as licks and fills, different rhythm ideas, different turnarounds. You can use all the information for you to just run through the 12 bar blues in A with this tuning. You could just shuffle it. The whole time, you could finger pick it the whole time. But what we're gonna do is we're going to Put these concepts into a 12 bar so you can see how you can take some of these ideas and make your own 12 bar with it and the idea would be that you would use these concepts modify them make them your own create your own licks and use this as a jumping off point to really start to experiment and get creative with this tuning and this style of play okay so first two measures are just shuffles nothing fancy in the first two measures three and four We've kind of seen this finger picking pattern we did touch on. But we've modified it slightly. We're using our ring finger on the third fret of the E string. And the fourth beat, we're doing the three hammer four open A string as a fill. Okay? So these four measures would be sound like this. Okay, 
Moving into the next four. Here we're doing that lower D shape that I like, and we're just gonna shuffle through the first measure. If that's too hard with the pinky, you could just wax on, wax off, or you could go back to this shuffle. We're well, using this one though. Do, 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 do. Okay, okay, so then these bars pop up, nothing new here. We're using that low shape D shuffle that I like more so than this one. If you can't do this one, feel free to sub it out. These three licks, we saw all three of them earlier. The only thing that's gonna be a little different is the 10, 7, 10, the one polar, two, and three, the third measure of these. We're gonna hit the open A on the one. So it's gonna go one polar, two, and three. All right, so these four measures are gonna sound like this. All right, I was a little sloppy on the second riff, but that's what those four are gonna sound like. The last four, we're gonna do our E shuffle, our D shuffle, and then the first turnaround of the two that we learned. Then we're just gonna come back up here and let's just strum through an open A and feel the beauty of the open tune. All right, so let's go ahead and just take the whole thing from the top now. Here we go. One, two, three, four. And that was it, folks. Thank you so much for watching to the very end. You saw how I Frankenstein the ideas together. That's what I encourage you to do. Take all those tips, all those ideas, all those pieces we went through, kind of think about them either as a rhythm that you would play over certain pieces of the 12 bar, or think about them as fills that you would add into the piece and just have some fun with it. Until next time, keep on rocking and rolling. Have a lovely day. 10thumbspro.com, baby. There you have it folks today we just went ahead and did open a tuning and we showed you how to play it like elmore james would have when he was living in chicago playing the blues this is a great tuning and you can also do wonderful things with the slide i hope you have a lovely day and until next time go cubs go bears and we will catch you next wednesday or saturday for next ukulele tutorial i'm getting a little new yorky Hey, the bears and we'll catch you next wednesday or next saturday for next ukulele tutorial have a lovely day and we'll see you then there we go finish strong foggy glasses rock and roll Ooh